Welcome to section 7.3, Identifying Functions from Numerical Patterns. This is one of my favorite sections because we get to determine answers without actually having to do all the work, only by working with the patterns. At the end of this section, we should be able to answer these questions. What are the numerical patterns associated with linear, exponential, power, and quadratic functions? How does doubling or tripling or changing by any factor the x value affect y when y varies directly or inversely with powers of x? How do numerical patterns help us identify additional data points? How do numerical patterns help us determine the actual equation for each type of function? Let's take a look at each of these four types of functions and examine what happens to our y values when we change our x values in certain ways. We'll see certain patterns emerge for the different types of functions. For the linear function, we can see that we call it the add-add property of linear functions. And what that means is that if I add a consistent number to my x value, then my y value will also change by adding a consistent number. Here's a function that we're given, y equals 1.5x plus 2.5. And here's a table of values that fit into this function. And I can see that as I change my x values by a regular amount, in this case, I'm adding 2 consistently, I have a similar pattern for my y values. Every time I add 2 to my x values, I'm adding 3 to my y values. And this will be true for all linear functions. For exponential functions, we see a different pattern emerge. Here, we've chosen the exponential function y equals 5 times 3 to the x. Here, the pattern is known as add multiply. And we'll see that when I am consistently adding the same value here, plus 2, plus 2, and plus 2, I end up changing my y values by a factor of 7. 15 times 7 is 135. If I multiply 135 by 7, I end up with 1215. And if I multiply 1215 times 7, I end up with 10,935. You can check me on your calculators. Power functions have a third type of pattern, one that we call multiply, multiply. Here, if I change my x values by a certain factor, then I can also change my y values by a certain factor. If I multiply, to get from 3 to 6, I'm multiplying by 2. If I continue with that pattern, multiply 6 by 2, I'll end up down here at 12. Notice how I skipped over the 9, because it's just not part of the pattern. It's a point on the function, but it's not a point in the pattern. To find the pattern for the y values, I would look for what number I need to multiply 135 by to get 1080. And it turns out that 1080 divided by 135 is 8. To jump down to the same row or data point that we used in the x values, I can see that if I multiply 1080 times 8, I get 8,640. So our pattern is still apparent. Let's look at our last function, the quadratic function. Here the pattern is what's known as the constant second difference pattern. Let me show you what that means. First, if we increase our x values by a consistent amount through addition, here it's by twos. And then we examine the pattern for our y values. 
Here, my y values dropped by 10, then increased by 14, then increased by 38, and then increased by 62. At first, there doesn't seem to be any pattern there. But if we look at how those changes in y changed, that's where our pattern emerges. To get from negative 10 to 14, I increase by 24. To get from 14 to 38, I also increase by 24. And finally, from 38 to 62, we see that increase by 24 once again. So these second differences are what identify a quadratic function.